In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the line renderer in Unity 5.5. So I'm going to go ahead, create an empty, I'm just going to call it line renderer. Now you don't have to, that's just for me, just so I know exactly what this is. I'm going to go ahead and reset the position because I want it at 0, 0, 0 for all the position. And I'm going to go ahead and add a line renderer to it. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the property. Now, just like the previous version, we have the ability to cast shadows and receive shadows. We can now add our motion to the, the camera's motion vectors, or we can go ahead and have it have its own or none at all. Our materials we're going to get to in a second. There's a few other things I want to look at before we go ahead and add a material to this. Uh, light map parameters, if you have any set up, you can go ahead and use those. Now positions, that's the same as last time. By default, you have two because, well, you can't really draw a line with just one point. And if we take a look here, point 0.1 here, point 0.2 there, if I add another point, things are going to get moved a lot. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and say uh, element 1, which is the second point right here. Uh, let's set it to 10 on the Z. Makes it a bit longer. Let's go ahead. We'll add another point. And let's bring this one up, uh, I don't know, 5 on the Y. And we have this nice line, two segments, three points. We'll go ahead and work with that. So use world space. If we notice I go ahead and move the game object, we can even see it's transform moving. Of course, we can move it along that as well. But the actual line render itself is not moving. And that's because its position, all these positions that we're entering here, are an actual world space. If we want those to be relative to the actual transform of the game object it's attached to, we can simply uncheck the use world space box. And now it's going to go ahead and move along with the game object that we have it attached to. In the space game that we made, we went ahead and used world space because it was just so much easier to say, you know, start that line from, you know, me and end that line at wherever my target is. But there are uses for the local space as well. Uh, one thing we could have done is maybe set up some sort of energy source on the back of our ship. And maybe we had some arcing lightning going between two uh, little pillars or something on the back of our ship. And we don't want to keep recalculating the world space as our ship moves through the world, so we could just use local space for that. Now with, just like before, we can go ahead and make it skinnier or fatter. And notice as we do, the graph down here gets a little bit bigger and smaller depending on the values you set. I'm just going to set it for one right now. And let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. Now, of course, we can go ahead and grab the points and make it skinnier or fatter according to the graph as well. But one really cool thing we can do now is right click on the, the line here. We can add another key. We can go ahead and start dragging this down. Go ahead and change the curve size. Maybe start it off really thin. I want to keep it over here. Move this up. Let's make it really steep. And I'm going to go ahead and add another one right here. Maybe move that down a bit. Make it even steeper. Let's move over here a bit more. And let's add one more key. We'll make it super thin. Or we'll just go ahead. Well, let's give it a big bubble right in the middle. There we go. So you see how you can change the shape of it? Let's go ahead and add one more point just to give it a bit more room to actually show this off. And let's do, I don't know, zero again. Let's bring it back down. And we'll have to go forward or backwards or something with this. Let's just go another five out. There we go. So now we have our line made up of three segments. But anyway, notice how it gets fatter as it goes to the center. And it's more narrow on the ends. Now the color we can't look at until we add a material to it. But we can go ahead and look at the next one, which is the corner vertices. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look here. Notice how sharp these angles are. We can round those out by adding more vertices to the corners. So even just by adding one. Now we've got one extra vertice in there. If we go ahead and add two. And of course, as you go up, you notice how it just gets rounder and rounder. I believe we can go up to 90. Let's just, yeah, looks like 100 was the max. Oh, sorry, 90 was the max I could put in. And while you really can't see it, what it's really doing is it's drawing out all these little extra segments here into your line. And if you look at the end caps, we can do the exact same thing. We can go ahead and round those off too, if you wish. But let's go ahead and we'll take a look at alignment. By default, the alignment is set to view, so your camera's view. So as you move this around, 
or as it's being moved around in the world. Uh, it's always going to be according to the camera view. We can also go ahead and set it to uh, one, the alignment view, uh, the local view. So its view is going to be set according to the, the transform. And as you move around, you're going to be able to get a different effect from it. And of course, if we just move around in the scene, we can see it differently as well. I'll go ahead and switch that back to view. And then texture mode. Um, well, we'll go ahead and we'll make our material now. The last two things is light probes or reflection probes. If you have those set up in your scene, you can actually use those on your line renderer now as well. So let's go ahead and we'll make that material. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call my line for line renderer. And you want to use a particle shader. I'm going to go ahead and just use the additive one. I'll select my line renderer and I'm going to come back up here and draw it, drop it right into element zero. Now take note that the line is drawn for every material you have listed here. So if you've got five materials, that line is going to be drawn five times. Now also new in Unity 5.5 is you get this outline of whatever you have selected. So if I were to go ahead and say put a cube in there, notice how I got the cube selected and it has the purple outline or sorry, orange outline. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead, we'll delete that. Let's come back to this. So we have a material. I'm gonna go back to using world space. And let's go ahead and take a look at color now. So if you open it up, you get the gradient editor. And the easy way to look at it is all these little, I like to call them crayons, but all these little tabs down here at the bottom, they control the color and the top is the alpha. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So you can always tell which one you have selected because it turns blue. And you can either click on it down here and change the color. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, some yellow at the end. Or double click. And that'll open it up as well. Let's go with a red. And anywhere along here, you can click and add another one. And let's add it. Let's do it. Let's do, let's do a deeper green. There we go. Throw a green in the middle. And of course, you can take these, drag them, move them along, change the gradient as you want. And up here, we have the alpha. So if you select one, you can go ahead and decrease the alpha. And you notice it becomes a little more transparent. You can also move where this alpha is going to start shifting. And you can see the overall effect, right? Now at the top, we have all the colors blending together. We can also set it to be fixed, which uh, is a much steeper step from one color to the next. And to switch back to blend. And the last thing we can look at here is the presets down here. So let's say I've set this up, spent some time, got it exactly the way I want it. I'm going to go ahead and click new and it saves it there. Then I can go ahead and make some adjustments, maybe make um, a completely different one. And let's say I like that and I can go ahead and hit new there and set up all my different gradients that I want. Then at any point in time, I can actually go ahead and just switch between them. I really like the gradient editor. So let's go ahead and close that. Uh, we've looked at color. I think the only other thing we really need to look at is the texture mode. So let's go ahead and select a texture for our material. And I want something with a little bit of uh, alpha on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, take a look at it here. So this is what they actually see. And by default, we have it to stretch. So you're gonna see that whatever that material is or the texture assigned to the material, it's gonna be stretched over the whole line itself. Now we can come in and switch it to tiled, in which case, well, it's gonna be tiled now. I'm sure there's some use for that. I just can't think of one off the top of my head, but hey, it's another option. So there we go with the new line render in Unity 5.5. What do you think about it? Do you like it better? It's got a few more options. Actually, it really doesn't have that many more options. We're not losing anything with it. A lot of it's just organized differently. I think the big thing is now we can go ahead and set up some Bezier curves for how we want the color to shift, or sorry, the width. And the color now, I believe in the old system, didn't weren't we limited to something like five colors? And in this one here, well, you can have as many as you want. But anyway, let me know down below in the comments. Do you like the new one? Do you like the old one better? If you've never used one before, are you going to start using them now? Either way, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>